In this episode of what old gaming tech has my friend left at my house for me to look at, we have this, a, a Chill Blast branded Clevo gaming laptop. This bad boy hails from around 2013, making it 11 years old now. Spec-wise, it's kind of mid-range. Uh, it features an Intel i7 4700MQ, 8GB of DDR3 1600 RAM, a 5TB SSD that may or may not have been an aftermarket addition, and possibly most importantly, a NVIDIA uh, GTX 765M GPU with 2GB of DDR5 VRAM. Now that would have been pretty decent for its day, but now 11 years on, in 2024, how usable is this actually? Well, let's take a look and see just how much of an improvement there was between the hunking behemoth, the ASUS G53J, and this much smaller portable gaming machine. Let's start with the physical. This is a Clevo W2330ST uh, chassis, uh, Clevo being one of the largest laptop OEMs, especially among these like customizable laptops from system integrators like Chill Blast or PC Specialist or people like CyberPower. Especially in this era, the early 2010s, if you ordered a custom gaming laptop from an SI, chances are it was a Clevo machine. They're sold bare bones, i.e. without RAM, storage, and sometimes even things like Wi-Fi cards. You then spec what you want on the system integrator's configurator page, they stick in all of the appropriate parts, and then ship it out to you. This machine looks to have been specced with 8GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR3 1600 RAM, which would have been pretty decent, but not exactly amazing, as 16GB would have been perfectly, uh, you know, a, a decent option for this sort of thing at the time as well. Interestingly, one of the perks of this being a customizable laptop is that Clevo designed this to actually be really easy to get into to replace parts like storage and RAM, designing a big hatch in the bottom that only needs a couple of screws taken out, and then they even have a handy finger pry spot to pop it off. That's something that I sorely miss on more modern machines. This still isn't exactly the like thinnest or lightest machine on the block. It is world slimmer and lighter than the G53J for sure, making for a genuinely pretty compact and portable machine, but it's no thin and light. IO is actually pretty decent with three USB 3 ports on the right, along with HDMI, VGA, Ethernet, and DC in, and then just one USB 2 port on the left, along with headphone and microphone jacks. Having the majority of the I.O. on the right isn't exactly ideal for a gaming laptop, you know, it's generally where your mouse goes, and we have, generally speaking, moved away from that these days, but there is actually some thought behind why they've done that in this case. The frankly terrible cooling solution, comprising of just a single fan, two heat pipes, and one heatsink, expels the hot air out of the left-hand side of the laptop, which at very least keeps the heat away from your right hand while gaming. It isn't perfect, most machines these days tend to prefer rear-facing exhausts and left-sided I.O., but still. Now creaking open the noisy plastic clamshell, uh, ignoring the frankly horrible texture of degrading soft-touch plastic on the lid, you're greeted with a pretty early 2010s look. Wide bezels, a 16x9 display, a pretty normal but decent enough keyboard, and a comically small trackpad. Admittedly, this is all very usable. It's not quite as good as, you know, today's machines, especially on the trackpad front, actually. This doesn't seem to support any gestures, including, like, two-finger scrolling, which does make using the machine a bit of a pain. Although there is a pretty strong expectation that you'll be using this with a mouse, and ideally, connected to a power plug because, um, well, the battery that's in here is fully dead. Like, if I were to unplug the power cord, uh, it would just straight turn off. Like, she's dead shit. Now, the battery is a fully removable, in fact, easily removable part, so you can just switch it out if you want, but of course, most of this machine's life is probably stuck to a power brick anyway, so I'll leave that one up to you. What interests me the most about these old machines is seeing how they fare under load both on the CPU, in fact, that's why the fan is currently on, just from existing, but also, you know, for, for productivity and creative type stuff, but of course also for gaming too. On the CPU front, the 4700MQ is a quad-core, 
as was everything until worryingly recently, thanks to AMD, uh, with hyperthreading. It seems to suck back about 50 watts, which is an awful lot for this terrible cooling system. Performance-wise, you can expect much better results than the 740QM in the G53J. In fact, around twice the performance in multi-threaded work, and nearly twice the performance in single-threaded work too. I guess that's what like a four-generation gap should look like. In Blender, it's about the same, actually a touch better, going from nearly 30 minutes in the BMW scene to a bit over 12 minutes Compare, although, you know, comparing to a modern machine that just takes 92 seconds, well, that's kind of less impressive. It is still more than twice as fast as the 740QM though, so that's a win. The Gooseberry scene still did take an eternity, at around an hour, compared to two hours on the G53J, or eight and a half minutes on the newer i9. Still. That's a hell of a lot of progress for just a couple of years. And with that progress, especially on the CPU front, you would assume that the you know, three generation leap in GPUs would mean considerably more performance in games too, right? Well, no, no it doesn't. At 1080p on all low settings, like the lowest you can get, the 765M in this thing does outperform the GTX 460M and the G53J, but not by all that much. CS2 has the 765 at just shy of 60 FPS on average, compared to just under 50 on the 460, which does make it technically playable, although it really isn't a great experience with hitching and stuttering just like mad. Siege is almost identical, except it actually is a little more stable, although not by much, seeing again just shy of 60 FPS average compared to just under 50 on the G53J, but of course both pale in comparison to even a you know, budget modern machine that will run you well into the hundreds of FPS on both of those titles. Anything more intensive though, and you do really start to run into issues. Shadow the Tomb Raider, which isn't exactly the most intensive game on the market anyway, ran at just 20 FPS in this thing. That is an improvement over the 17 FPS in the G53J, but it's just not playable. It's not even worth opening it, because it honestly feels like a slideshow. One actually rather telling thing is that when I tried to run uh, Aperture Girl's Smooth Frog Tool to see just how bad the display is for motion clarity, it just wouldn't run smoothly at all. It would hitch to the point of being utterly useless, even on the lowest graphical settings and the fastest motion per frame. It just will not run normally. That is, unfortunately, the sort of performance that you can expect here. I think that this, much like the G53J, is past its best before date. That doesn't mean that it's e-waste. As, as a sort of documents, web browsing machine, it does work just fine. The display is actually remarkably nice for viewing content on, even if it isn't exactly a great gaming display. I'm pretty sure it's an IPS panel, which makes it look really nice. Uh, of course, it's far from perfect, but it's definitely good enough. That, combined with the decent enough keyboard, makes this a nice little work machine. If you can put up with a fan doing that all the time, it's not super fast, but it'll do. For gaming, though, yeah, that's a no from me. Sure, if you want to play Stargear or something like that, go right ahead, it'll be fine, but anything 3D, I'll pass. Of course, those are my thoughts, but I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. Even just at the time of filming, how old of a laptop uh, could you conceivably see yourself still playing games with? Obviously, we're at sort of 7th gen right now, maybe a 10th gen uh, in terms of um, GPUs, something like that, maybe? Let me know in the comments what you think, and if you want to see me test some more older laptops in modern day, feel free to let me know in the comments as well. You can also hit the subscribe button if you want to see that, and if you want to check out my own uh, open source hardware, the open source response time tool and open source latency testing tool, those are both, av both available at osrtt.com, link in the description, and there'll be some other links in the description if you want to support the channel. You can also check out plenty of other videos on the end cards, including the G53J video if you haven't seen it already, and otherwise that's kind of it. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next video.